This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at how we can fine tune torch vision models or how you can perform image classification using the PyTorch library. For this, I'll be using this tutorial from PyTorch which talks about fine tuning torch vision models and the data set which I'll be using is the Paddy Doctor Paddy Disease Classification. Okay, so the challenge over here is that you have given images of paddy leaves from paddy fields. Okay, and from that you have to identify whether it's a normal paddy leaf or there are nine disease categories. Okay, so that is a classification, image classification problem over here. And they have provided a training data set of 10,407 labeled images across these 10 classes, nine disease categories and a normal leaf okay and th there is also this test data set of 3 4 6 9 images which you have to classify into one of the nine disease categories or a normal leaf so this is the paddy doctor paddy disease classification data set on this i am going to do the image classification using pytorch okay so if you look at this fine tuning torch vision models tutorial what they have done over here is that uh, in this tutorial, they explain how you can actually try out different models. Okay. So the different models are, it could be ResNet, it could be VGG, it could be LXNet, SqueezeNet. These are all deep learning models, right? For computer vision. So you can try out these different models. That is what they've explained in this tutorial. And they've also explained how uh, using uh, transfer learning, you can quickly fine tune a model. Okay. So I have made use of this tutorial. And if I were to dwell into these models, they, that would become a too long video. I would make separate videos on uh, in the future on ResNet or VGG or LXNet or SqueezeNet or InceptionNet. But the current uh, ta uh, task which I want to do is that I want to make use of this tutorial and then try uh, it on this Paddy Doctor or Paddy Disease Classification Dataset. So actually I've already run a Kaggle notebook. And if you look at this, I've used the GPU accelerator and it has taken up to 10,000 seconds okay for this particular this thing i will come why it is 10,000 seconds and this has achieved a score of 0 0.98231 accuracy so the measure over here for the evaluation measure over here is just uh, categorization accuracy so if you go to categorization accuracy it is nothing but your uh, you know overall accuracy true positive plus two negative divided by all the predictions uh, basically true positive plus tn plus false positive plus false negative Okay, so this is the um, metric which they are using over here in this data set. Okay, now let's go to this particular notebook. Uh, as I said, I've used GPU accelerator over here. So first thing I do is I import all the necessary libraries. I will not go too much into it. Um, so the torch vision libraries as well as from torch vision, I take data sets, models, transforms, uh, matplot, uh, matplotlib for plotting, then data set and data loader. Okay. So first let us look at, uh, you know, the training data. How does it look like? Okay. So if you go over here and if you go to data, right? So if you see the data over here, you have train CSV, which has image ID, label, variety and age. Okay. So that is the train CSV. And then there are training images. Okay. So as explained, there are close to 10,000 images, right? Uh, if you look at this train CSV also, you have 10,407 uh, values which is image id and a label and age and variety is also given as metadata okay but i'm not using that okay so i'm reading the train data and it looks like this right image id label and age what i'm doing over here is that in this particular piece of code i'm trying to visualize at least four images for each category that is what i am doing this for that i group the train data by label and then the various disease groups are present and then for each disease group i am showing four images over here so this is the bacterial leaf blight that is a condition over here so if you see over here the leaves are affected one condition there is bacterial leaf streak that is a slightly different condition okay four images for that then you have bacterial panicle blight so that is another kind of disease then you have blast which is another kind of disease then you have brown spot Okay, another kind of disease on the leaves. Uh, maybe this brown line over here, that is the brown spot. Then you have dead heart. So if you see the center of the plant is kind of dead over here. So that is dead heart. I'm not sure about that, but from the image, it looks like that. Okay, I'm not an agricultural scientist. 
so this is downy uh, mild dew um, this is hispa this is normal and this is tongue row so these are the 10 classes so what i do over here is i create my label to id and id to label uh, using one hot encoding basically so after doing that this is how the labels look like so bacterial leaf blight will become zero and similarly tongue row is nine and all the values normal is eight so, so you get label values like this okay now let's uh, go into some configuration so the model which i want to try is resnet why do I want to try ResNet? Why I wanted to try ResNet was that um, an, an another person has released a notebook okay, over here and uh, if you look at that notebook, it has achieved a classification of 98% accuracy. So I wanted to start using that particular notebook. Okay, That is why I have considered it as uh, ResNet over here. So all credits to this particular author of this notebook as well as this fine tuning torch vision models. I have taken most of the code and did some minor edits for this work okay so what i do is that as i explained uh, i select resnet okay number of classes is 10 batch size is 64 because if i increase the batch size it was running out of memory and number of epochs is 100 so why was this number of epochs 100 so i experimented with 25 50 and i saw it improving so finally i said okay i'll try 100 epochs over here okay so the number of classes is 10 okay so i do a train test split uh, of the train data uh, and this thing one thing which is missing over here is random state i generally put random state as zero so that i get repeatable uh, splits but in this case i have not done that so this is the my training data and my test data is five percent 95 percent is going for training and if i look at the training data this is how the data is distributed across the various classes the normal is the highest then you have this distribution for the various classes Okay, so now I have to create a data set to actually uh, read the data and load the data using data loaders in PyTorch. So in a previous uh, video, I've explained how I have created the data set. I will not go too much into detail. It is very simple. I get the image, I read the image and then uh, what I do is that I convert it into pill image. Okay, and I also uh, read a label for that particular image from the uh, train data frame and i uh, you know return an image and label i convert the label to a tensor and i if there is any transformation on the image i perform transforms and i return an image and label okay now let us look at what kind of transforms i perform so the, for the training i do these following transforms i have also created a video on transforms in detail so you can look at that video as well so link to both the videos of the data set as well as uh, this uh, transforms i'll put it in the description of the video you can check it so what are the transforms I am doing over here? I am doing random vertical flip, horizontal flip, rotation, resize, to tensor and normalize. Okay. This normalize comes from, uh, you know, these values come from, you know, for that particular model of ResNet, what are these values? It is from that, which is from ImageNet. Okay. Similarly, for the validation, I don't do anything. I just resize the images. I do a tensor this thing because uh, this particular network accepts images of this size. Okay. So then I create my data set. Uh, for the train data set, I pass the train images, uh, this thing, and I pass the train data frame, which I have split. This is the root directory. Okay. For validation, I pass the validation data frame and I pass the root directory where the images are and the transforms are valid. Then I create train loader and validation loader. What does this train loader and validation loader do? These data loaders are available to actually, you know, create batches of these images and then iteratively you can iterate over batches when you are doing the training. Okay. So I then I create a dictionary of data loaders and that is what is done over here. Okay. Then just to show how a batch looks like of the train loader, that is what I've done over here. So as you know, my batch size was 64. So every batch looks like this 64, 3, 224, 224. That's my images and corresponding labels. And one image looks like this with its label. Okay. This is because of the transformations which have been applied on the image. Okay. The next uh, thing is we have to define a method to train our models. This is exact copy from this tutorial. So what happens over here is that for every epoch, what you do is that for every, uh, whether it is training or validation phase, based on the phase, you do model.train over here, right? So once uh, uh, you basically set model to training mode, if it is validation or testing, then it becomes model.eval, okay? Um, then what you do is that you uh, iterate over the data loaders okay and when you are iterating over the data loaders and if it is a train you make this optimizer as zero grad you zero the parameter gradients and you do a forward pass 
okay that is what is done over here if it is inception it is slightly different uh, if the network is inception otherwise you pass the this thing you pass a criterion which is a cross entropy function you calculate a loss then if it is phase train you back propagate the loss and you also do an optimizer step okay that is what is done in the training method and there are some other things for your uh, computation of the epoch loss epoch accuracy and things like that in pytorch this is the basic framework for training a model what you do is that you pass every batch through the network you obtain the losses by using a criterion which is a loss function which is your entropy or cross entropy in this case and then what you do is that you propagate the loss backward as as well as you do an optimizer on the gradients you do an optimization on the gradients using some optimizer like adam optimizer or sgd okay so that is what is happening over here if it is validation um, then you just uh, you don't do this back propagation of the output all you do is that you just compute the forward this thing and you compute a loss okay you don't do a back propagation and you also what is what happens over here is that whichever model has the best validation accuracy that model you want to return it back so that is what is a thing which is happening over here so finally you return the best model weights okay and you return the model with the validation accuracy history okay well Val validation accuracy history okay and this is a small method for actually setting which parameters require training in the model or not okay so i forgot one important thing over here which i didn't mention let me go back to that um so if you look over here in the configurations okay let's come to the configurations maybe it's after this yeah there is this feature extract okay now if feature extract is equal to true if you have a deep learning network only the last classifier layer is actually trained okay but when i did that i didn't get very good accuracy so what i am doing is that this model resnet is initialized with image net weights but i am going to train it end to end that is why feature extract is equal to false okay so that is the thing which i have done so for that it actually what uh, it computes over here is that which part of the network if you go to that particular code it is about which layers of the network should be uh, you know uh, basically feature extract is to which uh, parameters of the model should be uh, not trained or frozen okay now in this case in our case all the uh, layers of the network need to be trained because feature extract in our case is false if it was true only certain layer would get trained okay other weights will be frozen that is the idea now this is a model initialization function where you have the option of selecting resnet lxnet vgg squeeze net right uh, then you have dense net inception uh, so you can try these various models so what exactly happens over here is if you look at resnet as an example you load a resnet model like this okay this will download the weights and it will create a resnet model and you say that uh, set parameter requires gradient basically which uh, parameters needs to be trained which layer needs to be trained which weights needs to be updated that is what you pass the model and you pass the feature extract in our case feature extract was false so the entire model will get trained and if you look at over here you are actually pulling the last layers features you are getting that over here and then for the final classifier in case of default vgg it is 1000 classes but in our case we have 10 classes so we replace that last layer with our uh, linear uh, layer passing the number of features with the number of classes okay number of features comes from here and uh, this is an uh, sequential this thing so this is your classifier layer modification for our problem but we would be training the entire network okay and input size is 224 similarly for other networks you have appropriate way to modify the last layer which is explained in this fine tuning torch visions model tutorial okay now if you go down in this uh, say once i run this you will see over here is that it is downloaded the model it says this is the resnet model okay it explains the it shows the complete resnet model architecture over here how many layers how many basic blocks so this is layer 3 uh, so layer 4 and finally a classification layer so this is the classification layer over here if you see the input features are 512 the output features are 10 okay now this model is sent to the gpu basically you are checking if gpu is available or cpu is available depending upon that the model is actually uh, if it is gpu it will be run on the C gpu if it is cpu it will run on the cpu that is what is done over here and what params to update all the parameters right because uh, Uh, the uh, we have actually said that feature extract is false 
okay so if you look at the output and then we optimizer is sgd over here this is the parameters of sgd a learning rate of uh, 1 e to the power of minus 3 and a momentum of 0.9 now if you uh, see the output that it is actually training all the layers of the network okay that is what is done then you set up a loss function which is a cross entropy loss and then you train your model okay you call the train model method with the model with the data loaders with the criterion which is your loss function cross entropy loss with the optimizer number of epochs okay and if it is inception then there is some small changes which needs to be done so i did this and then if you look at uh, the initial epochs uh, by seventh epoch itself it has like 90 percent validation is available uh, like it could get that but then as i increase the number of epochs so what happens is that uh, it increases to 97 um, then 98 then after some time it goes to uh, 99 also right after 36 epochs validation accuracy is still 0.97 so at the end of 100 epochs after some epochs it kinds of saturates right so at the end of 100 epochs it selects a model with the highest validation accuracy so the model which has been selected over here had an validation accuracy of 0.988 or 98 percent okay so then what i do is that i test it okay for testing what i do is that uh, so the folder is test images. I make a list of all the uh, images present over here. That is this test uh, data frame. For this, I create a uh, test data set again, uh, which I've explained in the previous video also how to do it. Here it is just reading an image and returning a uh, null label basically. The label is kind of uh, useless over here. Okay. So that is what uh, I do over here. Okay. So once I do this over here, I pass this, uh, I create a test data set and a test loader. Okay. So once I create this test data set and test loader, I pass it to the, uh, what you call, I, I pass it to the model. But before that, I have to do model feed dot eval. And then here is where I pass it to the model and I get the output. And then I create a list of file names and a list of out predictions. So that is the data frame which I create like this. Okay. So once I create this data frame, then I write it into the submission file and then I just save the model. So this is the, uh, what you call set of uh, process for actually image classification using PyTorch. And so when I submitted, when this run was over and I submitted the data set. Uh, so if you go to the data over here, there will be this submit option. Uh, if I select submission, there will be submit option. Once I submit this, I got this particular score. Okay, so then I thought that why don't I try one more network? So I tried uh, the same uh, this thing code with the dense net network. Okay, again the number of epochs over here are a little bit lesser, I believe. Let me check it because I'm not sure if I did for 100 epochs or no, here I did for 75 epochs and using the dense net model, rest of the code remains the same. It is just a change over here in dense net. Okay. And this has been run for 75 epochs. And here I also show the, what you call uh, the transformations applied on the image for a batch. I've shown it over here. Uh, so this particular model gave me an accuracy of 97.539 or 0.97539. Okay. 97% accuracy was given using tens net. When I tried the other nets, uh, Alex, when I tried uh, say VGG, the accuracy was slightly lesser. When I try, I didn't try Alex net or other networks. Uh, I just tried, uh, you know, these rest net and dense net. Okay. So this is a very common framework for doing image classification with PyTorch. Only that your images are going to change. Okay. And then you can also go a little bit advanced in terms of optimizers and the loss functions and uh, schedulers for the optimizers. But the basic framework for a uh, image classification using PyTorch looks like this. So basically you read in your images using a custom data set. Uh, then what you do is that uh, you uh, set up your data loaders right you initialize a model you set up a criterion function you set up an optimizer and then call a train step so this is a basic framework in pytorch for image classification i hope this video on image classification using pytorch on the paddy disease classification data set uh, is useful for you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i will be putting the links to this uh, notebooks i will make these notebooks as public and i'll be putting the links to these notebooks 
you can also uh, maybe copy this notebook and make some changes and try you can also make a submission to kaggle it's up to you see you in another video happy learning